Is the India Middle East economic corridor under threat due to the ongoing Israel Hamas war? US President Joe Biden's recent statement sparked speculations that Hamas's October 7th attack could be linked to it. But the White House has now issued a clarification on this statement. Biden on Wednesday said that the Hamas attack could be a reaction to quote unquote regional interfration with Israel. And he did not explicitly mention the India Middle East economic corridor. His statement indicated that he, he could be talking about the multinational economic corridor linking India, West Asia and Europe. The project was announced during the G20 summit in New Delhi in September, but a day after his statement triggered a massive speculation, the White House said that Biden was quote-unquote misunderstood. National Security Council's Strategic Communications Coordinator John Kirby said, and I quote, I think you misunderstood him. What he said was that he believed the normalization process and agreement we were trying to reach between Israel and Saudi Arabia, an important step to a two-state solution, was what he was talking about. But irrespective of Biden's statement, the ongoing war has put a question mark not only on the possibility of normalization of ties between Israel and Saudi Arabia, but also on the larger integration in West Asia. Hassan T. Al Hassan is a research fellow for Middle East Policy, International Institute for Strategic Studies, is now joining us live from Manama, Bahrain. Hassan, welcome to you on World is One. Joe Biden's recent statement linked uh, Hamas attack on Israel to the IMEC, indicating that the outfit could have launched the attack to deter the project. How plausible do you think that is? Good morning and thank you for having me. Um, it's only plausible insofar as IMEC, from the US perspective, was supposed to be one additional step, one additional measure or initiative to facilitate Israel's wider integration into the region. Uh, and so part of IMEC, of course, is that the corridor would uh, uh, come in from India to the Southern Arabian Peninsula and then continue from Saudi Arabia to Jordan, uh, Israel, and on its way to Europe. And so the idea was that this would be an economic initiative to facilitate uh, Saudi-Israeli normalization. So uh, in so far as IMEC is meant to facilitate that process, then we could say that in a very, very indirect way, uh, it was linked. But in reality, I think uh, the geopolitical factor, the idea that Hamas wanted to support Saudi-Israeli normalization uh, is an important consideration, but it's not the only one. There are, in fact, a host of domestic factors, uh, Israeli-Palestinian dynamics that could explain uh, the timing. Under the right-wing, extreme right-wing government headed by Prime Minister Netanyahu, we saw a massive expansion in settler violence and settler activity and provocations around the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, and let's not forget that the Gaza Strip had been under uh, blockade for over 15 years and that this is not the first confrontation, not the first conflict uh, between Hamas and Israel. So there are a number of factors that could explain uh, the uh, obviously the onset of this uh, conflict right. that are embedded in the wider history uh, of uh, the Israeli-Palestinian issue. Hassan, what will be the economic and also geopolitical impact of the IMEC on West Asia region amid this war? It's very difficult to tell because the extent of detail that we know about IMEC is still extremely limited. A lot of it uh, is going to be done on the back of pre-existing uh, projects such as GCC uh, rail interconnectivity. GCC rail interconnectivity projects uh, precede uh, IMEC by many, many years, but have been slow to come about. Uh, India's infrastructure projects have also been uh, slow to materialize. So it really is difficult to quantify the trade facilitation potential or even the uh, feasibility, the financial feasibility of this initiative without uh, there being much detail about it. At the moment, it's we should think of IMEC as a means of political point scoring. It allows the US and India to say that they're countering the BRI. It allows, it allows the Arab countries to say that they are at the crossroads of the BRI and the uh, Partnership for Global uh, Investment in Infrastructure. And it allows Israel to say that it's going to be, uh, or that 
was at least going to be part of a wider uh, geoeconomic architecture in the region. So it's, it serves a very important political purpose, right. uh, but insofar as its economic potential is, it's very, very difficult to tell at, this, at the moment. Hassan, finally, do you think IMEC will emerge as a potential competitor to China's Belt and Road Initiative in West Asia? And is there a timeline for that? We are talking about the future here. At the moment, that seems unlikely, because unlike uh, China's Belt and Road Initiative, there is no real commitment of funding. Uh, when China embarked on the Belt and Road Initiative, it put behind it hundreds of billions of dollars in terms of soft loans, grants, uh, and other forms of uh, commercial financing and so on. In this case, the US has not really made a very clear commitment, a very clear financial commitment to support the uh, projects that will go under the umbrella of IMEC or any of its other initiatives under the Partnership for Global uh, Investment in Infrastructure. Uh, the U.S. has talked about mobilizing finance from partners and from the private sector, but it's unclear to what extent the U.S. is going to invest a financial commitment uh, on its own. And so without a clear financial backing, uh, it's somewhat difficult to see how the PGII, IMEC, and so on will be able to truly compete with China's Belt and Road Initiative. I've been talking to Hassan T. Al Hassan, who is a research fellow for Middle East Policy, International Institute for Strategic Studies. Hassan, thank you for your input and for talking to us today. Thanks for having me. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.